Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Following the recent security situation in Ekiti State and an earlier statement where the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Kaude Egbertokun, ordered strategic deployments to deal with the incident, the President Balatunubu today has ordered the IG to ensure that all the perpetrators are apprehended and caused to face the full wrath of the law. This was made known during the visit of uh, the Ekiti State Governor, uh, Governor Biodun Oyebanji and the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Opoyami Bamdele, to the Inspector General's office at the force headquarters today in Abuja. It was addressing the incident in a bid to finding a lasting solution to them. Well, the IG has now, we understand, of ordered the deployment of police helicopter, armored personnel carriers, IRT, uh, SG as uh, operatives, and uh, police mobile force personnel to augment the manpower already deployed to Ekiti for the special operations. This is special in the sense that it burdens the mind, especially because it caused a lawmaker crying on the floor and moving the motion on how to tackle insecurity in the country, considering the, um, the spate of kidnapping as we've seen recently. But again, the National Assembly says they will resume uh, com uh, or commence amendment to the Constitution. Uh, PDP governors are asking for one thing. They met when they visited their counterpart, the governor of Plateau State, Governor Caleb Mufuang, and the PDP governors are unanimous on their plea and they are asking for state policing when the amendment to the Constitution commences. Take a listen to the governor of Bauchi State. When we brought uh, uh, people or hunters to help us with the security, they were like users of doing uh, uh, what they call uh, the killings without judicial process. But certainly, if the federal government is doing very well, so this thing will not happen. So we had them to sit up so that there wouldn't be any suspicion of extrajudicial killings. And we ought the federal government, because in, in uniform, we believe we should be allowed as governments to have step on this, because we want to move and crimes of this. Good governance means safety and security, even before the government. All right. We can hear the governor of Bauchi State. Let's get a sense of what the police is doing in this respect, especially uh, stemming from uh, the conversation around the, the presidential directive to the IGP. And we'll be getting uh, some legal perspectives and uh, insight into what the Nigerian National Assembly should uh, be looking into when they commence amendment to the Constitution, especially when governors of the PDP are asking for state police. And of course, I have tonight joining me, Mr. Muiwa Adejabi, who is uh, the police force public relations officer, he joins us live here in Abuja. So thank you so much indeed, Mr. Adejabi, for your time tonight. Sure, good evening. Oh, yeah. Good evening, Nigerians. Thank you so much indeed. And I'll be joined also to give legal perspective a very senior lawyer, Mr. Kaode Adeluola, senior advocate of Nigeria, who joins us virtually from Lagos. Thank you so much, Leonard, for joining us tonight. appreciate it. Let's begin. There was a directive from the president. What was it like? Well, the in furtherance of our effort to make sure that we fortify every community in the Kitty State as a sort of incident of the killings of the traditional rulers and kidnap of the pupils and teachers of a school in the Kitty. The president gave directive to the inspector of police to do adequate deployment and of course make sure the perpetrators of these heinous acts apprehended a cost to feel the fraud of the law. And the governor of Ekiti State, accompanied by the Senate's majority leader, came to the office of the IGP today and there was a short security meeting to see how we can do adequate deployment. The earlier today the IGP has given the right to you that the assistant inspector of police be posted to zone seventeen. The 17 commands uh, Ondo and Nikiti State. So we have uh, a new AIG in charge of that place, Yonah uh, Shabi, who has been mandated to proceed to Akure, that the headquarters, and move immediately to Ekiti, uh, to relocate temporarily to Ekiti State, to coordinate all these coordinated activities, uh, operational activities of the police, and to be supported by other security agencies. So well, there's a resident commissioner of police there. Yes, there's a commissioner of police 
in charge of uh, Ekiti State Command. But the AIG controls Ekiti and um, the most senior things. officer, definitely. The most senior officer, so, so that he, he is that's that's the style because ordinarily the AIGs are to supervise. Uh, they are commissioners of police in their jurisdiction. Administratively. Like that's what the IGP did in Plateau State too. The IG in charge of Zone 4 uh, was moved to uh, uh, Plateau just to go and coordinate the activities in charge of that place. So it's always a tradition that when we have issues in our commands, the supervisory IGs are always deployed temporarily to relocate to all those uh, states to take charge of coordinated operation we have. So the IGP has other deployment. In fact, today, uh, the, the chopper he has given directive to AIG Air Wing to deploy uh, one of our choppers to Ekiti State, specifically for this assignment. Uh, our target is to make sure we arrest the, the culprits who actually attack those traditional rulers and kill two of them. The IGP has sent his condolences to the good people of Ekiti State and the government of Ekiti State and the families of the affected traditional rulers. Why are we assuring uh, the people of Ekiti State that the, the kidnapped populace of those schools and their teachers will be rescued on halt and be uh, reconciled or united with their families. So our deployment is uh, is going to comprise PMF men from neighboring states, the squadrons in neighboring states from Mundo, that's Mopo 17, and some of them from Moshu, Mopo 39, all of them will be deployed. Uh, the directive is clear already, they are going to move immediately to Ekiti State. And IG has given directives to discharge of um, that is IRT, Intelligent Response, Response Team, this is Mohamed Sanusi to move his men to that place tomorrow. Some of his men will join yeah. our area support too, to give them area support yeah. in the so, so, Mr. Adejabi, that those who will think that isn't this belated, because when these kidnappings and this attack happened in Ekiti, it's been days, and those perpetrators who may, must have moved, their, their, their footings and their the, the trails would have been uh, swept away if, for you to be able Ch to don't, don't, don't forget them. that there was a time we made a statement that the police is having a paradigm shift in our policing system in Nigeria. We're embracing electronic policing and we do forensic investigation. The common say in forensic investigation is every offense committed leaves a trace. Even if they go. There was a case in, in the north that we did, in, particularly in Plateau, the killing of one of the uh, largest one big men in Plateau State. We adopted our forensic analysis and investigation to trace the, the killers. And they have been apprehended. I parodied them just recently, I think a week ago, here in Abuja. So if, if they even go, they are, every offense committed the forensic investigation leaves a trace. We surely get them. Mm. So, we surely get them. Yeah. So, I mean, what is your preliminary investigation telling you about the AKT case? Well, they, generally, we know that hand, hand men attack them. We wouldn't want to jump to any conclusion or preempt what the investigation will say, whether they are social people or not social people. But now we have 13 suspects arrested so far in connection with that incident, and we are working with them. They are actually giving us reliable and useful information, which uh, we are working on. I'm sure the IGP has directed the CP to have a comprehensive report in that regard. As I speak with you, they went to the bush again today. Uh, I'm sure by now, if they are back, they must have even picked some of these uh, criminally minded element who are causing problem in that area. The CP has been mandated to do thorough press briefing about this and to give us a report adequately. I don't want to preempt what the report of, from the command will say, but as I speak with you, we have 13 suspects arrested so far, and we are sure we're going to get more of these elements so that we can bring them to book. We will continue to, to, to go into all this bush. Do you know there is a forest, uh, I think, in that locality? And the command CP has led some of our local uh, hunters and people in the community to actually comb some of these uh, bushes in the area. So we, we are sure and we're optimistic that we're going to get all of them apprehended and they are going to be uh, brought to book. One of those things that uh, uh, the, the Honorable Member Akin Rotimi, the spokesperson of the House, said on the floor is how these guys pass through checkpoints and pass through different uh, uh, in installations of, uh, of security agencies and uh, unchecked and they perpetrated this evil uh, and that some of the installations are in fact dead and inactive. What has caused that kind of situation? Well, Tim, there are so many things, when we're discussing issues like this, there are so many parameters and indexes we need to look into. The, the first thing is you see that recently the IGP 
made a statement on how we want to review the use of tint or tinted glasses on our vehicles. This is one of uh, the major problems we have that Tom, Dick and Harry in Nigeria, we always want to have their vehicles tinted. As I yesterday, the IGC had, had a meeting with some experts and our, our trained officers on how we can review uh, the issuance of the tinted permit and the likes. We discovered that some of these uh, crimes committed, particularly violent crimes uh, connected to, uh, they, are, they are called vehicle related crimes. You can't have kidnapping, you can't have some of these incidences without the use of vehicles. You can't be mobile, either bike, motorcycle, or tricycle or vehicles. And most of the vehicles they use now are tinted. They have tinted glasses. And that's why we want to clamp down on the use, wrongful use of tinted glasses. And I, we have noticed that some of these vehicles applied our roads are, are not registered. It's, 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 it's criminal if you, if you use a vehicle on any of our highways and the vehicle is not registered. It's, it's criminal because you have that tendency of, of committing an offense uh, or, 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 on, on check because well, I thought you, I, I thought the police give uh, tinted vehicle permits. No, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. The law, the law is clear that if you have a vehicle, even while you're importing the vehicle, all, all tinted glasses must be removed. You don't expect a dealer to be selling out vehicles, whether factory fitted or man made uh, fitted so vehicles. Any tinted vehicle should be removed. However, the law, every law comes with exceptions. The exceptions there are what? Two. You can use tinted glass for security reasons, VIPs. Then the law has empowered the IGP to determine who is that VIP to enjoy this privilege of using tinted glass for security reasons. So the second one the is medical. Yes, yes. It's the second thing is, is on medical ground. If you have bad sight, you have to get to a, a government hospital. They are going to give you a recommendation that you have, you have bad sight and the police should consider you to use your tinted uh, glasses on your vehicles. So, but, but, but now we have noticed that dealers even violate this law. They come in. So the IGP has set up the committee. The report should be with the IGP any moment from now so that it can clamp down on the misuse of some of these uh, facilities in Nigeria, using vehicles without registration number, using vehicles with numbers covered. How can you go and register your vehicle, yet you still go ahead to cover your number plate? It is criminal, and Nigerians should know that all these things come together to affect our security architecture. Are your men going to start arresting people with cover plates we'll do, we'll surely, and, we'll, and tinted vehicles? We'll, we'll surely do. we we'll, we'll surely do. You know that we have ECM out now. We have department that's motor traffic division of the police, they are to work with Federal Road Safety Court to see how we can actually clamp down on some of these unregistered vehicles that apply our roads in Nigeria. Then if you cover your number plate, it's a criminal offense. And then indiscriminate use of sirens. You blood sirens anyhow as if anybody is severe. No, 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 no. We need to checkmate all this because if you don't do it on time, it's going to affect our security arrangement and networking in Nigeria. And that's why the police is taking it more serious. To make sure we clamp down on all these things. Yeah, uh, I see the kind of deployment that the, the IG has ordered to Ekiti. Uh, there is, uh, the, there was a driver that was killed recently, a few days ago. There is a bus uh, filled with students that was uh, ab ab abduction that were abducted. Now, when we wonder what has the police discovered that has caused this rise in kidnappings in Nigeria? Well, let, let, let me start by saying pain ransom is criminal in Nigeria according to the provisions of our law. But what do you do? But, but, when, but, you are, but when... the problem we have in most cases here is that families of victims in most cases, they don't carry security operatives along. They get scared because uh, kidnappers always work on their psyche. Don't tell security agents. Don't tell the police. If you do, we are going to kill your relation. So, and they keep but quiet. But they've been it's... killing people. In the, uh, abductors have been killing people. No, no, Chief. Again, to every offense, you want to understand the psychology. What is psychology? Now we need to get, understand the dimensions into kidnapping. Dimension typology of kidnapping. Before, kidnappers would take kidnapping as a business. They would kidnap, negotiate, get money. They got to a stage. They kidnap, get money. They still go ahead to kill the victim. They got to a stage. They kidnap, get money, kill, still negotiate for the release of the cops. So we actually need to see them and understand the typology and dimensions of some of this crime to know the psychology behind all this. And it got to a stage that kidnapping is no longer like a business. Hatred, impetuotism. I will like kidnap that I want to get money. Then, at any slighted provocation from the, the, the family of the victims or the, from the prosecutor agents, then the next thing is a shield victims and kill them. So we're actually trying to study the typology and the psychology 
of all these crimes, and the dimension is to kidnapping in Nigeria these days, and it's going to help us because we need to actually do analysis of all these things so that I can get it, try to know where we're actually uh, tackling these problems from. And also, we, we, are, we are having it right now because families of victims are now having belief in the police. See the case of Bari Shum, mm. it got to a stake that the, the father actually went to the wrong place, and he got to a stage, we called him, I spoke to one of them, and I said, can you actually allow me to share your number with such a person? He said, yes, sure. He has believed in me. And we started from there. And that's why we are able to have a way forward on that case in Buhari and many other cases like that. What, what, what is the root cause of this rise? What, what, what has the police discovered you, 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 that you, 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 all of a sudden, between December and January, there is a spike it, it, in, it is, in, in most cases, is the topography of some of these areas. See Buhari, for instance. See the topography. But they are kidnappings in Lagos. Is topography also what is the waterways? A factor. What is the waterways? Don't forget, the kidnapping in Lagos was actually triggered due to the waterways. Do you know that the water from Lagos, the waterway from Lagos, leads to Delta, leads to Porakot, leads to Bayesa? It's the same waterway. What about so, Ikiti? Is that the same thing in Ikiti too? No, Ikiti is forest. And the thing you need to know is that when you study all this, you can't. There are certain things the police cannot do. Alone. But these things have and been that, in existence that, before that, December and January. The, the it, trend has gone up recently. Isn't there a it, sociological not, reason it, it, for it? It is not that it's going up like that. Forget what we read in social media. Reality, it is not so. This one in Nikiti is just an isolated case that just happened recently. It's not that something that is happening on, on a daily basis. No. We have cases that are isolated, but when you read them on social media, you think it is not what you have on record. So we don't have that, that the incident of kidnapping on the rise from Nikiti. Or anywhere in the southwestern part, or in the north, that is northeastern or southwestern part of Nigeria. Well, so well, these well, are well, well, cases. But, but, but Mr. Uh, Mr. PPRO, yes, the cases of abduction has been reported. Uh, a security uh, consulting company uh, says that about 68 cases reported in December, 25 reported in November, 71 alone in January. Sure. These are the trend. Sure. I've just told you that's a thing we need to consider when we discuss the issue of kidnapping. And it's not that the security agencies, particularly the police, it's not that we don't rescue. I can tell you that with the record I have, we have many rescues in Abuja, rescues in Plitu, rescues in Kaduna, on a daily basis. And I want to put it to you that so far, that the number of total kidnapping suspects arrested, that we even arrested 139, those are rescued at 154 in the last one month. It is not that we don't rescue, but don't forget. Let me. I'm tell saying you. why, what? why, why, why has there been a rise? I have, I have told you that paying, paying for ransom is, is negative to us. It's not what we should. So make, maybe people got, think that it's now. You got to a stage that somebody did crowdfunding on social media. This will not help us in any way. If you do analysis is of that something, acts criminal, acting, it's criminal. To, 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 uh, to crowd, it is criminal. It to, is criminal. It's not allowed. It's condemned. If the federal government condemned the act. Crowdfunding is not allowed. How can you come for on social media for and ransom. be telling people to gather money to go and rescue beauty? It kills our moral, it kills the system, and it's not allowed. I see say it now, it's condemned. You should not encourage that. The more we encourage payment of ransom, it makes that business, that dirty business, look lucrative. The SRI, it should the not be encouraged. The special uh, uh, team that the uh, IG has put together, when will they get that to work? That is SIS. SIS, SIS is working, Chiu. Yeah, you recall that on 23rd of June, when about the third day into the office of the Inspector General of Police, the IG made it clear in his inaugural speech to the media, the made in press briefing. Paragraph 5 of the speech, you can go to it. The IG declared the establishment of SIS and immediately started mocking on it, commanding, selecting commanders, selecting twices, and fit commanders. We had to have a meeting. There was a committee set up, and committee gave reports. After the report, the IG started working on that. He traveled to the US to go and meet uh, the International Narcotics uh, and Law Enforcement Bureau of the U.S., who is the key partner now to support the IGP in making sure we have funding, support, logistics, including training. And I speak with you, the commanders are undergoing training now. After the commanders, all the men are going to be trained. 80% of SIS is from the PMF, that's the punching arm of the force. And the idea is to make sure that we have 1,000 armed policemen trained to be in various states to assist the states Commissioners of police. So they will have area area capabilities. They can move easily. They can move easily. They, they, have, they are going like like like, like each time. IG, IG, don't forget too. on 29th yeah. December yeah. last year when IG was in play too. IG made pronouncement of establishment and kick off flag off of SIS in play too. 
And I can I can assure you now, go to Platuna, you're going to see them working with all the operations we have there, and they have arrested many people. They did a press briefing on that, uh, I think, last week. And the same thing in Abuja. Immediately we gave SIS to them in Abuja. Uh -huh. Everything everything started coming down in Abuja, and people in Abuja can actually give kudos to us. Now, today again, we have rescued more than 30 people in Abuja here, yeah? and it's on a daily basis the CP made, uh, you had a press briefing, I think, yesterday. Uh, the PRO2 did. I, I, I've been doing that to update Nigerians on our achievement. So SIS is a very strong mm. core that we're going to have on ground, quick, quick, and it's going to be yeah. spread across the states. Okay. We have in Abuja you now, we have in Abuja, and very soon we want to get to some of the north central states, mm. so that when we flush them out of Abuja, we don't want them to precipitate, let me use the word precipitate, in all Another, of the area. neighboring states yeah. in the federal capital. Just, just for a moment, let me bring in uh, Mr. Kaode Adeluola, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria, because the National Assembly is thinking of um, uh, amendment to the Constitution. And uh, PDP governors are asking for state police. It's good to speak to you tonight, uh, senior advocate. Give us an understanding of, of what this will mean for policing, for the citizenry, and for our laws. And, I mean, for one, we wonder, why has it been so difficult to put state policing in our law? It's been a recommendation. Uh, in the uh, the confab. Thank you. First of all, the constitution today, as we speak, in section two one four, it is provides that we shall have um, and Nigeria will have a, a police force, and it's known as Nigeria Police Force, and that will be to the exclusion of any other force in any part of the federation. So what we have regarding our police forces at today is a unitary command from top to bottom, from Abuja to the name to this to the nook and cranny of, of our country, Nigeria. And also in section 215, it says it says that the um, inspector general of police shall um, have the command of the police force. In other words, one person determines what goes on the police force, of course, with his um, colleagues and the police service commission. But more importantly still, the president has authority to give orders to the inspector general of police or any minister he so designates. Now, what that means is that the various state governments cannot police their own respective states. The local governments cannot police their, 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 their communities. And what does that mean? It means if there's a crime in any local government in Lagos, Zamfara, Cross River, or a number of states, you must wait for the police under the command of the Inspector General of Police to do anything. Now, look at what has happened in Akita State. The President gave the marching orders to the Inspector General, who has in turn spoken to those on ground in the various um, uh, formations around Akita State to keep moving. And like you rightly said, before they mobilize, the trail of these guys might be obliterated, although we have uh, the public relations officer there with you, saying that no matter what, they will have the forensics to be able to trace them. <clears throat> As for me, I'm, I'm, I, I have a, a sufficient faith in the Nigerian police force that we have today. However, we have issues about attitude, we have issues about their, their comportment, we have issues about their relations with the members of the public who they're supposed to protect. Now, if we're going to have state police, are we going to carry this over to the respective states, would we have a situation where some governors will simply see the uh, state police as their personal bodyguards and just the poor? Would we see the state police men simply being um, bodyguards to some of our high profile people? The public pressures officer have said something which caught my attention earlier. He says, oh, for the um, tinted windscreen, an exception could be a VIP. Who is a VIP? We are all Nigerians. We all are Nigerians. You find in some homes as many as six or 12 police men sitting there in a high lux, and down the road, a crime is committed and there's no policeman to, to chase the criminals. So if we're going to have state police, we must have a paradigm shift completely. Yeah, but, but, each let state, me say, yeah, if I may jump yes. in quickly, <clears throat> why has it been difficult for us to achieve, because if this had been uh, proposed severally, and those who are talking about community policing, they fear that you raise about 
some elements in the state using the state police uh, uh, apparatus for their own uh, individual and selfish gains is one issue that has been raised. But the question is, what would you say to the National Assembly members? Because it experienced a setback in the Ninth National Assembly. What would you say to them this time around to ensure that we get a law that can help police this country adequately? if they are good to go about it this time around? So what I'll say to them is, let us have state police. Let the rules guiding them be very clear. Very, very clear. And I tell you, if you have state police, it should be one step towards restructuring. It should be one step towards stamping the federal character of our nation, federalism that we are supposed to be practicing. What I mean by that is, if we have state police, let those in, say, for example, Anambra State, say, for Anambra State of a population that we have, we only need maybe 100,000 state police or 200,000. And we want to be sure that anyone who's applying to be a member of a state police force is at least an HNE holder. And we can then have the other ranks who are also properly equipped and trained. That way, we shall have a healthy competition amongst states. If you have a state police in Lagos, for example, the likelihood is that they're going to be very well looked after. But then again, we don't want state policemen who will be yes people to the governors. We don't want state policemen who will be yes people to the politicians. And I believe that is the reason a lot of people have been kicking against it. The rules must be clear. We must have a robust debate regarding the state police. It's not about um, the senators and House of Representatives members sitting behind closed doors fashioning a, a law for us and saying, here you go, you've been asking for state police, here you are. No, we should have clear-cut rules. And we do. We must have people who must be devoted to the work. State police will not be only by men in uniform. It will also be inform have informants in the nook and cranny. If you have them, they will report to the police daily in my neighborhood yesterday. This was what we observed. This is the straight person who has come in. These are the things we need to have. And by the same token, I know not a lot of people will share this. If we need to, we could find some police, forensic police departments of different parts of the world coming to train our people in crime prevention, crime detection, and what have you. But, but I mean, I, and I, will, uh, I, I spoke with one of the leaders of Afeni Ferry, Pa Ulu Falai, who was uh, telling the president, who was one of them in the trenches, though, uh, pro democracy agitators. And he said, look, you were part of us who are advocating for this. It needs to make restructuring happen. But you, you hear a, a lawmaker, a senator, who is proposing that every Nigerian should be given right to be able to, uh, to have a gun, to be able to defend themselves. Where does this kind of proposition stand in Nigerians being able to defend themselves if you look at the template of the United States? Now... Now, you see what happens in the United States, for example. Guns are available. If you can go to the, to the, to the supermarket, you can buy yourself a gun of your choice. Some people have, some people actually collects them. In a place like Nigeria, we need to determine the rules. Who is entitled to carry a gun? Should it be somebody who just walks in from the streets? So, you see, we must have a way of having background checks to determine who's entitled to carry a gun. Because you know what? If you do not know that I carry a gun in my house and you're a criminal, you will, you will think twice. Even if you knock at my window in, a, in moving traffic, you will think twice. But the rules, again, as I said, must be abundantly clear. Indeed and in truth, we do, I do not think we are at that point yet. Now look at what we're talking about. We have kidnappers. Some of them, I'm sure when you, when you see them apprehended, they look like decent people. But here we are. Molesting people all over the place, and we must ensure that we get to the root of this thing. All right. But for the question you asked, those who must have carry, must carry guns must be people who have had sufficient background checks done concerning them. So, now, okay, thank you so much indeed for your time, for the insight, uh, a bit clearer to some of us now. Uh, but let's close this conversation. A lot of Nigerians will ask: in other clients, you have nine one one. Uh, and you will call. Is there a short code or is this the same 11-digit number that we have to call and cram? 
What's your, um, we, we have that short code 112, but there's no 911 again. I don't know why. <laughs> one, one, we two. Does tried, it work? It, it works, it works. But now we, we have, they're trying to have a fusion center in the office of the NSC, and they are working assiduously on that. We had a meeting, I think on Monday or Tuesday, an NSC office. They are going to have some of these short codes back so Nigerians can easily memorize them and use them in case there is any problem anywhere. So we assure them we're going to have it very soon. And collectively, we're having, the NSA is trying to coordinate activities of all security agencies, including the military in Nigeria. We're going to be having the efficient center, that's joint press briefing center at the NSA office where all of us, the military, police, and other paramilitary yeah. agencies, we always brief Nigerians on a regular basis. But what we are going, we are having now, I'm very sure we are going to get it right. We want to assure Nigerians that it's going to be better very soon. They should just believe in us believe in the system, and let's be more patriotic. That's going to help us a lot. Well, what, what, I, what, what, I, what, what I feel or what, what I hear about Kao de Kuni is that the guy is really ready to work, uh, and I hope that Nigerians get the benefit of the hard work and his initiative. Well, well, thank you so much. He's, he's an expert in peace and security studies. So I think he has brought that one to bear for us in the police. And I can say it without missing words that very soon in Nigeria, we we'll see that we have that police force that is people-friendly, Rule of law compliant, professionally competent, and of course, service driven. That's, that is a vision statement of the Inspector General of Police, and we believe that will bring Nigeria Police Force to attain its primacy in the security of this country. I wish I get it right. Muiwade Jobi, thank you so much. He is a spokesperson of the Nigerian Police Force, and of course, we've been speaking with Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Kaudi Adeluola. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.